Nobody knows for sure what the prehistoric people used to make organic pottery paint. They may have used Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. In this video, I will show you how to turn Rocky Mountain Bee Plant into organic vegetable-based pottery paint. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about organic paint pottery. That's the kind of pottery that is painted with an organic vegetable-based paint that in the firing process leaves these black carbon designs on the pot. This is a replica that I made last year that was painted with organic paint. And here's an example of an actual prehistoric pot painted with organic paint. And you can tell it's organic uh, because the designs kind of have a, a washy effect. A lot of places it's thin, you can kind of see through it, like watercolors. Uh, and the edges are a little soft. So, this was fairly commonly used uh, here in Southeast Arizona between about uh, 1300 and 1450. And then up in the Four Corners area, um, a lot wider time frame uh, that organic paint was used. And it's still used in some of the New Mexico Pueblos today, like Santa Domingo and Cochiti. Now I've used in the past for organic paint, um, things like yucca. This is yucca fruit, the wide leaf banana yucca boiled down. Um, I think that's what I used on this, but I'd have to check my notes. I'm not sure right now. This is mesquite beans boiled down. And you can see that's a lot. That's a, that's a big pot full of mesquite beans boiled down. Um, and I make large quantities of it like this because I use it in workshops and we go through it. And then the Pueblos that, that still do organic painted pottery, like Santa Domingo, uh, they traditionally use Rocky Mountain bee plant. This is a small container of bee plant paint that my friend Clint Swink gave me. Uh, and I've used some of it. It was full and it's, it's over half empty at this point. So I've never made my own organic paint out of bee plant before. Uh, mostly because it doesn't grow here in southern Arizona. So you have to go up... Uh, at least above the Mogollon Rim before you run into Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. So I was recently up there and I collected a bunch of Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. Here's a little piece that is kind of dried out. Uh, the stuff that I have is, is all dry because I collected it, you know, over a week ago at this point. And so I'm going to turn it into um, paint and I'm going to show you that process. So I have um, some materials here that I'm going to use. First of all, um, you need a big pot to boil your bee plant in. And I'm just going to break up my bee plant into small enough pieces to stuff in the pot and I'm going to cover it with water. I have a large garbage sack full of bee plant here and I'm going to use the whole plant. That is, um, leaves, stems, flowers. The only thing I'm not using are the roots. So I just chopped it off at ground level. Um, and I need a pair of scissors or something to, to cut the stems because they're kind of dry and stringy at this point. I'm just using these tin snips because they were convenient. For water, now you would want to just cover this with water, but you want to be careful and not use hard water. So because I live in Tucson and our water is notoriously hard, I went down and bought jugs of distilled water to use for this project. If your water at home is not overly hard, you could use it. But remember that as you're boiling it down, any minerals in the water are going to become more and more concentrated as you boil this down into paint. So be aware be aware that any minerals are going to become more concentrated as you boil it down. 
Now I've got my little Coleman stove here and I'm gonna cook it out here. This is a porch, by the way, not inside my house because it doesn't smell very good. It's gonna stink up the house if I do this inside. So it's nice to do it uh, in an outside area or like on a porch like this so that you don't um, run your family off while you're cooking it. So four gallons of water in this big ball canning pot. I've got it pretty well full of bee plant. It's filled to within maybe an inch and a half of the top and turn the fire on and now I'm just gonna babysit it for the next few hours while it cooks down. And then uh, I'll have to cool it before I pull the solids out. So uh, we'll catch back up then. Okay, it's the next morning now. Uh, I let this cook well into the evening and then I finally turned it off, let it cool. So this morning I pulled solids out without burning my hands reaching in there. Um, real quick, a note on if you're gonna try to make some organic paint pottery designs, um, <clears throat> it requires, first of all, that the organic paint be applied to a very specific smectite clay slip. And not all smectites are equal in this regard. I don't know what the chemistry is that causes it, but certain ones are better at this than others. It also requires a very specific firing regime. So I will put a couple of links to videos over here uh, that will help you understand that specific slips and firing regimes for obtaining black designs from organic paint in case you're interested in trying to do this yourself. Now this morning, I'm gonna try to pull all the solids out of the pot. I'm gonna strain the liquid that's in there so it's just liquid, like a strong tea, and then I'm gonna boil it down to make paint. I probably could have used another gallon of water last night uh, as the water level in the pot started to get low. So the plants at the top didn't cook down to the same level as, as those at the bottom uh, because the water level was dropping. I had already made three trips to the store though and I just didn't want to make another. So there was my initial trip to get supplies and then I decided I needed another gallon of distilled water so I had to make another trip. And then later in the day, I started to run out of propane so I had to go back and get more fuel. So. Uh, I figured three trips to the store was enough. Uh, so now I'm going to start pulling the solids out of there. strainer bag. It's old and it's got some holes in it, but I'm thinking it'll strain out most of that junk. The holes are near the top. So this is used by like contractors to strain out um, lumps in paint. And they also work pretty good for purifying clay. And just like that, we have pure beeweed tea. A very strong tea is what you're left with. A note on pans. I'm told you want to avoid aluminum pans. I, I don't know enough to tell you why an aluminum pan is bad, but they say to avoid aluminum. So this is enamel, and then the next pot I'll use is stainless steel. And I will not put a lid on this. I'm just gonna leave it open because at this point I'm trying to I'm not cooking tea anymore. I'm trying to evaporate moisture. So the more moisture I can get out of that pot, the better.
Okay, this is the third day of beeweed making, believe it or not. Uh, I had to leave the house for a few hours yesterday to help my wife with some things, so I didn't cook it all day yesterday. I've got to cook down where it's getting thicker. Not, there's still inch and a half or two inches of liquid in the bottom of the pot. So today I'm ready to cook it down the rest of the way. I got myself some little containers to put it in when it's ready. And those work really good because uh, in a workshop I can kind of divvy those out among the group. Maybe a couple people share, but um, they're easier to spread out than if I have it all in one large container. So I just need to cook that down. Not very much. And at this point, I'll have to keep a very close eye on it to make sure that it doesn't burn too much and burn onto the bottom of my pan. Well, I did it. I got distracted by food. My wife made breakfast. I went in, ate, sat down for a good 15 or 20 minutes. And then I realized, oh, I haven't checked on this in a minute, and it just, it didn't take long. It scorched. So, um, it's a mess. I, I put some of it while it was still oozy into some cups. So I've got some, but I'm going to try to get, I know I can get a couple more cups out of this, but I've got to soften it up again, which means getting it hot. And you know, I'm not going to get, just put this on a burner because it'll just scorch more. So I've got to do a double boiler. So I've, I put water in my big kettle here and I'm going to put this, so I'm going to put this in the water and then boil the water. That way it'll heat up without burning and um, hopefully it'll be liquid enough that then using my rubber spatula, which I have around here somewhere, then using a rubber spatula I can get all of that or most of that out of there. So that's the plan now. I actually have, unfortunately I've done this before making paint. It's not my first time making a mess out of it. So um, you, when it gets, when it starts getting thick, you've got to stay right on top of it and you've got to sit right there. And unfortunately, if, you know, 105 degrees out here on this porch. So it's also not a comfortable place to, to spend time when it's 105 degrees. Okay, I've got the double boiler going on. You can see here, Water is boiling and the glop is, well, theoretically softening. The spoon is hot, almost too hot to touch, but this stuff's still a little gooky, so we'll keep working on it. Ugh. Steam in my face. So that's where I'm at. Uh, hopefully soften that up. And then uh, I'll use a rubber spatula to put it in these little cups and I can put a lid on it. Okay, so overall it went pretty well. Um, this is the fourth day since I started, believe it or not. A part of that is because uh, of my negligence. Um, I end up with four cups of paint, which is okay. I think I could have got more if I hadn't been negligent because um, paint splattered all over my workbench, paint splattered all over my stove. I've got a lot of it stuck to the inside of my pot, so I've got some cleanup to do. If I'd add more water to the beeweed when it was boiling, I probably could have got more tea out of it as well. So there are some things I could have done better or more efficiently to get more out of this. Um, but this is a lot of paint, a little bit goes a long way, and I'll be using this for some workshops and some experiments to compare with other organic paints in the near future. So look for those. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my channel, think about subscribing so you know when the next video comes out. If you'd like to learn more about organic paint and how to get that on pottery, check out this video over here, which goes into a lot more details on the mysteries of organic paint pottery. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.